the economy is fundamentally changing. Jobs that have gone are not coming back. And so I'm a big believer that one of the central key points for preppers, for preparation, is the concept of self-reliance, i.e. financial liberty. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. Today our special guest is Fabian Calvo, founder of FabianForLiberty.com. He's been a candidate for state legislature. He's an author of multiple books, especially on the area of real estate, but other topics regarding uh, liberty and finance. He's here today to talk with us about ways that we can increase our options for resilience of our family's livelihood and income so that we're not entirely dependent on this, the wage system for our sustenance. Fabian, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. So a lot of our viewers are still very much involved in the traditional uh, career wage earning paradigm and yet they sense that there's not real security for them and of the various ways that people can increase security we were hoping that you could enlighten us a bit about ways that people can broaden their options for income so that they're not entirely so dependent but more independent from this wage paradigm yeah, I mean, it's a great, it's a really great, uh, a, a, a great question to be asked. You know, I mean, I think that most people are caught in what's often referred to as a normalcy bias, really because of conditioning. I think most of us had growing up, which is, you know, uh, when I grew up, I heard from my parents, go to school, get a good education, then try to get a good job that you could basically work there until you retire. Well, I think. Everyone in the audience knows that that paradigm has fundamentally changed, and I think there's a there's a wealth of economic information that you know the economy is fundamentally changing. Jobs that have gone are not coming back, and so I'm a big believer that one of the central key points for preppers for preparation is the concept of uh, self reliance, i.e., financial liberty. And you know it so happens that I think we live in a world still where people can uh, begin to earn a living doing what they love to do. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many different programs that I'm interviewed on where we have, you know, people that might have a financial channel, might have an economic, and this is just one example, right, where they have a financial channel, a, a channel on, on prepping, whatever it may be. A couple years back, they were in the job paradigm. Then they said, you know what, I want to focus on what I really love to do. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to build something. And they've built it. And now they have a career doing what they love to do. I think that's within reach of all of us that really want to go for it. So in the case of ways that people can first take some initial steps in that direction, what are some things that they should do? Is it, is it research they need to do? Is it learning they need to do? Is it self-reflecting they need to do? Or are there some specific steps that basically would benefit everyone? Yeah, so here's the steps that I like to to start off with. I think all of us are born with unique abilities and unique talents. I mean, you know, for example, uh, for myself, I've I've always been someone that was very creative, even as a child, and um, and I've used that creativity to really help build my business in real estate, um, and and basically get my information out on entrepreneurship and and the other topics that I speak about. So. And I think most of us, if we do a little bit of soul searching, we'll say, you know what? I have a real passion for gardening. I have a real passion for whatever it may be. So that's the first step. What do you love to do? If you if if you could get paid doing something that you absolutely loved, what would it be? And so once you have a few of those ideas, what I would then go out is I would find, and and this is easily done on 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 Amazon. It can be done via Google online. Is who are experts already in that space that are making a living catering to that niche community, catering to whatever that passion is? And really what it's called is market viability. How, how, how viable is your idea, is your passion? And I think people will be surprised to learn that pretty much without exception – Every niche has a market viability, especially in the world that we live in today. So those are the two big steps. And market viability can be determined by, again, how many books are on the subject, how many Facebook groups are on the subject, different things like that that tell you, you know what, it seems like there's a real demand in this space that I'm passionate about already, 
And, and perhaps I should start creating the community and catering to that passion. And from there, it's basically just keep doing what you love and building it. It doesn't mean you quit your job tomorrow to do this, but obviously there's a transition period. When you mentioned finding out what else is already going on in that area, I would encourage people to realize that that doesn't mean that they should be discouraged that, oh, it's already a crowded field. Obviously, I'm just, it's already, somebody already got there first. Somebody already had that idea. It's like, no, that means it's a viable idea. It's, it's a it's a workable idea. And the fact that there's interest in one place or one community, there's more there's room for more than one voice in out there. And especially as we talk about local communities or we talk about online opportunities, there's in many ways, uh, it's a good sign that, that there's opportunities that, that you can find your place in there and people can, can hear your voice or receive your services or make a relationship and loyalty with what you have to offer. It's a great point, Lee, and people need to obviously understand, and I think people grasp this already, that it's it's a global economy. And, 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 the, uh, and the, you know, the, the 1% of 1%, uh, the, the George Soros's and Warren Buffett's, shouldn't be the only ones profiteering from that global economy. I mean, there's people all around the world that share that niche or share that passion that you have. And, and as we see, for example, in the world of media, the world of media and, and so many other industries are fundamentally changing. What's often referred to as mainstream media is dying. Viewership is at record levels. Uh, if it wasn't for bank bailouts and everything else, they would be going basically bankrupt. Many of them, many of them on the books are bankrupt. And what's happening is that there's a new media arising on the internet that covers everything from lifestyle to fitness to prepping to economics, you name it. And people around the world are, are looking for new voices uh, that share that same kind of common experience, that share that, uh, that same passion about whatever the subject matter is. And so this to me, I think, you know, all of us, I think, Lee, are, have the expertise on things that we love. And there's very various different ways. I mean, it could, you could you could have a blog, you could have videos, you could have audio series, you can you know uh, be a, be a mentor. There's so many different ways that we can you know. I, I have a, a gentleman who um, uh, I'm interviewed from. He he has a great podcast. He started to write fiction books on prepping, and he's sold thousands and thousands of copies of books. He was never even a writer before. And so these are the opportunities that I think are at the heart of achieving not only self-reliance, but more importantly, financial independence. Now, Fabian, you yourself, if you could just take a couple of minutes to tell us about your story. It's quite remarkable coming from the background that you did and what you were able to build uh, at your young age. Certainly. I mean, you know, I was someone that was absolutely stuck in the job paradigm. I, 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 I bought into the go to school, get a good job. And while I was, while I was at college, I, I, you know, I, I just felt this isn't for me. I dropped out of college, and I remember in one summer I had seven different jobs, from working at a closing department store to working at a pizza sh- a, a, a pizza place, working at Xerox Corporation, and it, it just really I, I I just didn't like it. I, I was I was my creativity was stifled. I was basically working from some for somebody else, and I just you know as they say I wasn't feeling it. And so I started to look around, and I said to myself, well, who are the people that are living a lifestyle? that I want to be able to live, where I'm my own boss, I make my own hours. And and that experience, for me at least, it was other real estate investors. So in my early 20s, I dove into real estate investing. Um, you know, I've been a real estate investor for over 10 years now. And in the 2008 crash, leading up to it, I, I had thousands of rental units. I was able to sell many of them, but like a lot of investors, got hurt in 2008. But after that, I, I applied the knowledge I had about economics, the knowledge that I had built and have taught myself about real estate investing. And I really doubled down in the industry and was able to create my company, The Note House, and have achieved a tremendous amount of success. And that's why, I guess in my own experience, Lee, I'm so, uh, that, that's what makes me so passionate. I understand that everybody's going to be a real estate investor and, and, and they don't have to be. That's not obviously the only, the only path to go down. There's so many different paths and we've mentioned a few. For me, it was a good path. For me, it was a path that 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 I'm that I'm not only passionate about, but it's one that I've spent the last year and a half sharing with others in hopes that they can go down that same road. So, if people want to find out more about the real estate ideas that you have to share, where can they find those out? 
Yeah, they can go to resourcefulrealestateacademy.com or just Google Resourceful Real Estate Academy. If they opt in, I have a, a, a free video series. I believe it's uh, six uh, videos that basically cover the opportunity, common myths, and 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 you know because it it, it, it it's, there's a lot of myths when it comes to real estate investing that are just not true. And, and, and one of the biggest ones is that, you know, you need to take on debt in order to uh, invest in real estate or that you need, uh, you know, money to invest in real estate. Uh, you need money, but it doesn't have to be your money. And, and there's so many different ways. And, and, and that's what I love about real estate is because it's the only asset class that I know of that someone could start investing with no money out of pocket. I've proven that many times. And people that hear that for the first time, they're like, well, that sounds like an infomercial commercial. Yeah. And, and, and I'll admit it does. But for my life, it's been true. And for hundreds of other people that I personally trained, it's been true for them as well. Now, a lot of the folks who listen to our channel are concerned about reducing risk and preparing for um, being more resilient. So your advice as far as following your passion, following what you're interested in, and that can generate alternate streams of income, and that makes you less completely re dependent on your sing your day job as your so sole source of income. In terms of uh, taking on additional real estate, that also seems to make sense in the sense of this is an, a real asset. It's not something that's just going to disappear and vanish if, if there were some uh, currency collapse or some other you know social unrest. But people are often concerned about reducing debt, and so if if people are already own real estate or if they'd like to own more without taking on additional debt immediately, what are some of just few key principles that they should be aware of that they might find out in your book? 